Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Agistil, starting as the red Zerg. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Ninjob as the pink Terran, and this is going to be game four. Agistil is up 2-1, so Ninjob needs to win this match in order to stay alive, but if Agistil wins this, he goes on to the finals. And Agistil, yeah, he's had a lot of creative builds, Zergling Ling, Flug, Ling Floods early on, that have put him in a good position. I, I feel like, actually, the last match... With the Mutalisks, he probably could have won that, I think with just a little bit better micro, or maybe with some reduced lag to help the micro. I don't know what the lag is like between Ninjob and Agistol. I do know that in prime conditions, it's much, much easier to control Mutalisks. I'm going to give a quick shout out to Jayun It's a Tank and TL Flash L FTW had nice dinner with them last night casting this. So this is a live cast on Thursday. I'm not sure why I feel like listing the date, but I'm going to do it on May 27th of 2021. Getting towards the end of the pandemic, but it was funny. At the beginning, just before lockdown, looks like he's going to do that drone extractor trick with an, perhaps an overpool here. Towards the beginning of the pandemic, I went and got mead with some StarCraft guys, of which Tank and TL Flash FDW were two of them. And, uh, it was weird meeting up with them. We met up with Jayun because he's about to take off from San Diego, where I am located. I like this SCV scout before planting that barracks from Ninjob, just to make sure he gets eyes on what Agistil's doing, by the way. And it looks like actually this time Agistil going for a 12 hatch. But anyway, so it was kind of surreal having the pre thing being like the last, like practically the last social thing I did, doing meet with StarCraft guys, and then coming back towards what feels like the end of it. We were all vaccinated. Going and still wearing masks though. Going in and getting some burritos here in San Diego. So shout out to all those guys. It was a good time. Spawning pool now plopping down. So Agistil going for, for once, a macro early oriented build. Ninjob taking this opportunity to do a little bit of harassment. Barracks just about finished. We'll see whether he opts to go for a little bit of a heavier command center build. Or maybe, honestly, I'm wondering if Ninjob's going to want to turn the top turn things around and maybe go for some sort of early timing rush, comparatively. Because there are those that, there, there are sneaky ones you can pull out against Zerg, especially when they're going the 12th hatch opener, but I don't know, we'll see. Ninjob is scouting counterclockwise, and he's going to end up coming across Ninjob's base last, unfortunately. I should start using the word Wittershins more often. First of all, I love that word, but second of all, it's, you know, that's what it means. It's going opposite direction. Anyway. He is opting for a command center, so he is going to go for more of the passive economic build and should easily be able to get away with it. And Agistol immediately. Wow. So only building the single pair of Zerglings this time. Now getting his extractor and opting for three hatch play. Actually building that third hatch in kind of a Sim City position at his natural. So definitely going for some sort of three hatch. Build the question is: Is this going to be three hatch lurkers, or is this going to be three hatch muta? I'll try to keep an eye on the tech to follow. Sometimes this does. Sometimes it is possible to see what Agistol's done a couple times in other matches, and that is a kind of a zergling flood. Ninjob, honestly, I feel like he should get down a bunker sooner rather than later. Regardless, this SCV is going to be critical in this interim space, just to keep it alive, to get a good look at what's popping out of this natural expansion. We are seeing another pair of Zerglings, so that's going to be four total. And I think that's a bit of a bait from Agistil. So Agistil's just plopping down two Zerglings, mostly to try to provoke a response out of Ninjob, I think. That SCV, ooh, taking more damage than it needed to on pathing. Five Marines out. It is not provoking, however, a bunker from Ninjob. He's going to cycle back around. He wants to see an additional egg hatch and to see whether those are drones or additional Zerglings. And going behind the mineral line and actually able to sweep around and might be... Yeah, it does see that pop, so he's got a good idea that... Nope, Agistol is in fact droning up rather than going for any sort of aggressive spread that direction. Six Marines, eight Marines out on the front. And this is actually Ninjob doing a good job of pushing his economy. Does have a refinery that has been mining gas out in front. And he's just now opting for a supply depot in front rather than anything else. This SCV is still alive with five health. Another SCV sneaking in. So actually doing the exchange, and at this stage, we see that Agistol has opted for 3-hatch Hydra. It's getting that Hydralisk speed, and it is possible he's going to go for more of a Lurker build, but 
I think he is definitely, definitely going for perhaps a Hydraling Bust. Because usually if you're going for a Lurker build, you see an early upgrade to Lair. Now it's possible that he just missed the Lair timing, or just didn't build it when he wanted to, or he's looking for some other option. Ninjab, ooh, misfiring there. <clears throat> Moving out with practically already a full control group of Marines. He's got his Medic Marines out. Ninjab is going to have a shot, actually, if he moves out with this army to take out this natural expansion with two hatcheries. Hydralisks are being produced. A second sunken colony may be required here. Hydralisks are not that fantastic against heads-up Medic Marine. Range is being upgraded, so it looks like it is going to be three hatch Hydra to start for Magistol. Magistol in a good economic position here, but he is going to need to defend against this. That was a good scan at the main. I think it's going to catch this Hydralisk then regardless, but it's going to see that there is... No lair there, and I'm almost wondering if this is again a build order loss. This creep colony I don't think is going to be in time if Ninjab moves right now. Yeah, he's moving in. That creep colony is not even going to be spawned. Stimming, moving forward. The Hydralisks are hiding in the background. Trying to bait through a sin. Now moving forward. Here's the thing. With a decent amount of focus fire, you can pick this off. And with actually a second round of Hydralisks, that's a lot of Hydralisks. <laughs> so I take it back. Agistil catching Ninjab off guard once again. So now it's just going to be a Hydralisk press into that natural expansion. So baiting Ninja Ob into the attack, he had actually built, I missed it too, built an additional round of Hydralisks. Has an overwhelming amount of Hydralisks. Now pushing in. He does have a bunker on the front. He's trying to get a second bunker down. But that bunker did not last long. This is a lot of Hydralisks now. No medics on the field to support them as well. Usually it's the medic marine combination that can be so deadly against all Zerg bio. SEV's coming off the line, and it looks like Agistil's done it and might be able to push himself into the finals. Medics here are not going to cut it. And once you have critical mass, you can just poke these medics down, and he's just picking off all... He's doing a really great job with that target fire as well, picking off a ton of SEVs. Got him! Man, Agistil's really good at this sort of stuff. I gotta say, he's like... It's, it's almost an art form, the way he's doing it, too, because he caught me. I, I will admit, I... I uh, he got me too. I'm like, is this going to be enough? I feel like with that Medic Marine Force, he actually might end up losing his natural. But then no. He saved the Larva, had a huge Hydro Stump, and is now breaching the main. And I just don't think Ninjob is just going to have the raw amount. Yeah, GG. I want to go back and highlight this. Because usually what you see in this sort of situation... Because I was expecting just continued droning. Let's speed it up to the golden moment here. He caught me too. Because typically when you see this, and straight up whatever Zerg versus whatever, it is Zerg is droning or over droning and then they get caught. So let's look at this from Ninjob's position right here. So he walks up, he's got two medics. This is actually a decent attack force for this timing. In a in a typical versus Zerg, but this is not a typical versus Zerg play. Second Sunken Colony is being built. Honestly, I almost feel like that was a bait one being like, oh no. So he comes in, he just sees a handful of Zergans, a handful of workers. He's maybe thinking earlier Hatchery. And he's, he gets baited in, and he's dedicated to this attack now. But here's the thing, like, yeah, usually where sometimes you'll see droning or whatever or not, this is Agistil off three Hatcheries producing nothing but Hydralisk. And he's already got that full control group from a minute ago. And Ninjab, yeah, stimming and getting there, but just getting overwhelmed, targeting the wrong thing, and not stutter, like just not having the wrong units to get it done. Zergling dying on the front there. Really well played. I'm going to put that one in my memory bank as far as things that Zergs can pull off. This is why I like casting Chobo League, learn things all the time. So, congratulations to Agistil. He's going to advance to the finals. We'll move on to the other side of the bracket, which is going to be Mighty versus Michael. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.